When you're glued to him, it's over. The devil tries to come and shake him. Have you ever tried to shake that big apple off a tree? It looks so pretty. And you just know it's going to be good with his grand. But you shook that tree so hard that it wouldn't come off. You know why? Because it wasn't ready. It was stuck to the, to the branch. It was stuck to the tree that brought me. It was stuck to the tree that caused it to have life. I'm here to tell you, if you stick to the tree that caused you to have life, the devil ain't going to send you this morning. But you see, when we have faith that is weak, Step on your toes or hurt yourself. Hurt your feelings this morning. But when your faith is weak and you don't trust God the way you should, the devil can shake you. Neil, he could shake us and he don't have to shake your heart. When we're not glued to him. When you got faith, your faith is wavering. And you put your faith in man. The devil's going to shake you. And you know what's going to happen? You will come tumbling to the ground. I'm still evangelistic this morning. Is that all right? Well, you're a pastor. I know there's a little bit of evangelistic in you, too. I did that thing on Facebook, what your name means the other day. This is I'm a prophet. I'm going to carry it. That's right. Amen. There's one more Facebook page I know what it is, but you don't want to see going to carry it. Because what the devil means for harm. Come on. Amen. 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 I fight 
fight the, some of the battles y'all don't have to fight. I want to fail sometimes. I want to stumble. But you know what? I serve a man that is the head of the house. I serve a man that is the head of the house that will never let you down. I'm 
stuck on him, Debbie. And when I try to shake him off, I can't shake him off. Because you see, there was a time in my life I shook him off. I shook him off. He didn't shake me off. He was trying to hold on with everything in him to keep me from shaking off. But I shook off. It wasn't a good life. Because every time I wake up in the morning time, I could always taste the sweetness of Jesus. Every time I'd lay down in bed at night knowing I wouldn't leave it right, I'd just know I could just smell the sweetness and just taste the sweetness of him. It only lasted about three months. And I kept tasting that sweetness and sweetness and sweetness and sweetness. I couldn't get away from it. I had to go back and get stuck on him like he stuck on me. Pastor, I've always been taught that when you're Christian, you got to quit doing everything you used to do. My daddy said he never quit dancing. He never quit drinking. He changed partners and he changed his mind. He kept two step with Jesus. He kept getting drunk every night of service. For the new wine that flows from heaven. When you're stuck on him this morning. He's got you. I said, while we go through the things we're going to, he said, that'll be a bed of roses. I told you Wednesday night, if, we, if it was a bed of roses, we'd be on a bunch of spoiled brats. If he gave us everything we asked for, right then, right there, we'd be a bunch of spoiled brats. I, I used to do that night, I forgot to get some of my sauces to be part of you. You're mad at me, don't you? <laughs> But if I brought you a sausage pizza, give him one and laid on the front, said, Hey, your sausage pizza gets up here. Come here. For about four weeks. And you wouldn't eat breakfast when you come to church because you knew my sausage, your sausage pizza was here. And it wasn't here. You know what you're going to do? You're going to walk here and say, Pastor, didn't he buy me no sausage pizza? <laughs> because I spoiled you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we get so comforted in the house of God. We get so comfortable sitting in the pew, sitting in the chair. And when the Lord starts shaking us up and starts changing and shaking the atmosphere and shaking the house, we get tore up. Come on. We get tore up because it ain't like it used to be. We get so tore up because we don't sing three songs and Take up offer and go to the house. Now we're singing 10 and preaching for an hour and taking up offer first. Well, that's shaking me up because that ain't the way I expect. You know, that's what you want in the church today because we're, we're, we're programming Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 And when we find time for him to operate, Come then we'll let him. We should program our, ourselves around him, Jesus. We should program ourselves around him. And whatever he wants to do, we should allow him to do it. Because we're stuck to him. Wherever he goes, we'll go. Wherever he leads, we'll lead. Because why? Because he's my father. He's my savior. He's my provider. He's my deliverer. He's my Savior. Yes. He's the one in time I need when I need him, I can go to him. Yes. He will supply all your needs according to his riches. <clears throat> Revelation 3 11 says, Hold steadfast to those things. He was talking about he was talking to the faithful church. He was talking to the faithful church. He says, make me be so faithful that I'm going to make your enemies bow down to you. Amen. I'm going to make people come to you. To you! Because you're holding steadfast to me. So if we hold steadfast to him, those ones who called you a name that you didn't like will come back and apologize. 
Those ones who talked about you are going to have to come back and say they're sorry. For those ones who persecuted you are going to have to come back and say they're sorry. If we hold on to him and stay steadfast in what he's put inside of us. Because why? Because his word is true. Do you believe in his power this morning? Do you believe in his power? Yes. The old song, there is power, power in the blood of the Lamb. Now let me see what they said. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. When the enemy comes, we want to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We want to speak his name, right? Yes. But when you speak it with blood power, When you speak it with the blood power, you say, what's blood power? He forgave you your sins. Yes. He can heal you of your sins. Because not only those stripes he took up in your back was for your healing, it was the blood he shed on the stripes of your back. That was for your healing. So the blood has power. The blood has anointing. So sometimes we might are saying, Jesus, by your blood I rebuke. So there's power in Jesus' name. There is. But it's by his blood that what gives him power. The blood's what forgave you of your sin. Is that what the Bible says? Come on. He said the shedding of his blood will be to give you remission of your sin. It wasn't his sacrifice he went to the cross. It was his blood that we share a power that washes your sins away. You can call on his name, but if the blood's not applied to your life, I said this way tonight, the only way to the Father is through the Son. By the blood of the Son, That'll wash away your sin <coughs> and make you white again. So you say this morning, when we're stuck to Him, we have power. When we're stuck to Him, we know that Jesus is right there for us. This morning, if you're going through something and you feel like the enemy's trying to jerk you away, and maybe He has, maybe He shook you a little bit, and maybe He's got you away from work. Jesus wants to hatch you. I'm here to tell you the blood glue is here this morning. The glue, the power of the glue is here this morning. And his name is Jesus. I'm here to tell you this morning he's here to give you what you need. He's here to save you. He's here to heal you. He's here to set you free. He's here to break every chain of bondage. That the enemy's got you tied down. I like, I've seen it several times on signs. I've seen it in Bluefield. Actually, I've seen it out here. It said, the cross is empty. The church will be full. Yes. The cross is empty. But the church will be full. Got to stay stuck to him, church. <coughs> Not only as individually, but as a body of Christ. Yes. We've got to stay stuck to him. And hold on. When he swings, Sister Cecilia, when he swings to the left, will just swing to the left with him. When he swings to the right, no matter how high he gets, and no matter how far he swings us out, we got to hold on. And when he just lets us dangle down, hanging on, there's no move, but we still got to hold on. Because why? Because maybe sometimes in the stillness of the night, in the stillness of the swinging, maybe that's where victory comes. How do you know? Because the Bible says, stand still. Stand still and see the salvation. 
Sometimes we just got to stand still. Can't get in front of you. We just got to stand still. And know he's going to take us someplace. Ain't it so easy to worship God when everything's going so good? Ain't it so easy to come in the house of God and when everything's just so hunky-dory, you just lift your hands and just feel so so wonderful and just want to worship Jesus and all this stuff. But when we go for a trial, we want to pull back. That's when you need to worship. That's when you need to throw up your hands because when the blessings go up, or when the praise is so up, the blessings go up. Caleb's got so much word in him, man. If you ever get a chance to sit down and talk to him, just talk to him. He's talking this morning about the abundance of rain that we've had. He said, Pastor, you ever thought the reason we're getting so much abundance of rain in the house that Jesus might be sending abundance of blessings to a better way? I'm like, preach, brother, preach. So we shouldn't complain about the rain. Because he might be getting ready to send some abundance of blessings. I was listening to old Jimmy, not old, Lord forgive me, Pastor Jimmy Swagger yesterday. Man, he set me a fire. You listen to him? Oh, yes, I do. You know what he did? I know he's forgiven for it. You don't hold it against him, though, because you know why Jesus don't go for it. You need to. I ain't Jesus. Jesus said, when I forgive, you got to forgive as well. But I was listening to him, and they were singing that song, Let Down Your Neck, Down Into the Water. Y'all know that old song, don't you? Let down your neck, down into the water, there's a blessing coming your way. Then when he told old Peter to go out and deep, go out into the deep, to go deeper, I might preach on this tonight. So I'm going to tell you, he said, go on out to the deeper. He said, Lord, we've been fishing all night. I know how to fish. I know how to fish. You don't need to tell me how to fish. I've been out all night. We caught the first fish. I threw every bait there is. I threw every net there was. And whatever. I ain't caught nothing. You don't need to tell me how to fish. Oh, my goodness. I probably should say this tonight because this is going to be good. We want to tell Jesus what we can do. But when he tells us what we need to do, we tell him we done tried that and we ain't going to do it no more. But Jesus got in the boat with him. He says, Peter, watch out a little deeper. Because the deeper water, there's more blessing. We only want to walk ankle, ankle deep. That's as far as we want to go. But Jesus told Peter, he said, launch out into the deep. And he got teaching on Peter, and he told Peter, he says, now throw your net over. Peter threw his net out, and when he threw his net out, painted there was a bunch of fish. He had to even get John's boat to carry the fish over the fish back. And when they were coming back, the boats looked like it's almost ready to sink because there was abundance. Sometimes you gotta go a little bit deeper what Jesus tells you to do. And stay stuck to him. Because he ain't gonna lead you in no direction that you don't need to go. If he tells you this morning to get up and walk the pews, get up and walk the pews. Only if he tells you. If he tells you to get up and run outside with pouring out rain, you need to get up and run outside with pouring out rain. I've told this many story before, and I'm going to tell it one more time, and then we'll close. Brother Wood used to come to this church in old gentleman. I know you've heard me say it so many times, but I just feel late saying it this morning. We were having a service here. I was young. I was young. Should have been filled with the Holy Ghost for them, but I didn't care. I just come to church because people, my mom and dad made me come to church, and I was trying to make the youth leader happy. Make the VBS person happy and make the Sunday school teacher happy and, and all this stuff. I just come to church because I just came to church. I knew now what I knew. I got all the Holy Ghost when I was 10 years old and I just run with it. But they were having the Holy Ghost service in this place one night. And this place right here, this church right here. See, I was raised here. Most of you don't know. I, I know what God's done in this house. I've seen God do things in this house. I don't know what God can do in this house. I was praying the other day, but there's been some curses upon this house that need to be broken so the prayer of God can do what you should do. And I 
those curses have been broke by the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way they can be broke. It's by the power. But you say, I can recall him and the pastor sat was up preaching. He says, we're going to do a Jericho march. We're going to ride around this town seven times. And this is when they had pews. And Pastor Sadler got up and he said, let's go, let's run. Let's, let's march around this church seven times. Brother Wood got up and bolted out the door. He ran out the door. And everybody's going to know where he went. He went outside. And marched around the church on the outside. Seven times. You know why? Because he was stuck to the glue. And he said, mm, I don't want you to do it on the inside. I want you to do it on the outside. We were stuck to him. And we wanted to hear his voice. He says, my sheep know my voice. Do you know his voice this morning? When he speaks to you this morning, can you hear his voice? When he speaks to you this morning, when he says, come unto me, y'all, you have a and I'll give you rest. Yes. When he speaks to you this morning, can you hear? Can you hear? If you can't hear him this morning, I'm here to tell you, he's willing to accept you into his kingdom this morning. He's here. I believe this morning he's speaking to your heart right now. Because why? Because I feel him in this place. I believe right now he's wanting to stick to you. I believe this morning he's wanting you to stick to him so you can have what he wants you to have. Would you stand with me this morning? Daddy, y'all come on and sing that song one more time. Because why? Because when you're in his presence, it's like heaven. Aren't you glad of that this morning? His presence is like heaven. So every head bowed, every eye closed this place this morning. You might be in this place. You say, Pastor, I, I feel the Spirit. I feel, I feel Him speaking to me this morning. I feel Him speaking to me this morning. And I know His Spirit is real. I know He's, he's speaking to my heart. I can feel Him this morning. If that's you right now, I just want you to simply pray this prayer with me this morning. Everybody just pray this prayer. Say, Father. Come on, pray with me. Say, Father. Everybody in the house, say, Father. Forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. Lord, I know that your blood applied to my heart will wash away my sin. And Father, forgive me. Forgive me of my sin and wash me clean this morning. And Lord, accept me into your family and into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. With every head still out this morning. If you prayed that prayer this morning, please simply slip up your hand while you're at me. Say, Pastor, yes, God bless. Say, Pastor, yes, God bless. Anybody else this morning? If you prayed that prayer this morning, would you just say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I want God to forgive me? Anybody? Anybody else? Yes, God bless. Yes, God bless. God bless. God bless. So this morning, what he tells you to do, he says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. So this morning, I want you to come. If you raise your hand up this morning, I just want you to come to this altar. I want to pray with you. I, want, I just want to pray with you this morning. So if you slipped up your hand this morning, I just want you to come. I just want you to come this morning. Anybody that raised their hand this morning. And while they're coming, you might be in this place this morning. You might say, Pastor, I'm going through a battle. I'm going through a trial. I'm going through something this morning that I need Jesus to, to let me know that I'm stuck to him this morning. If that's you this morning, would you simply slip up your hand and say, Pastor, it's me. Yes, God bless. Anybody else this morning? Anybody else this morning? He's here to take care of you. He's here to touch you this morning. Praise the Lord. Anybody this morning needs a healing in their body? They needs a touch in their body this morning? Anybody? Just simply listen to come hand away baby, this morning. Anybody? Yes, God bless. If you raise your hand this morning for healing, if you raise your hand this morning that you're going through trial, I want you to come. I want you to come this morning because I believe this morning today's victory day. I believe today is the day he's going to do all things. I believe today is the day that he's going to touch you. I believe today is the day that he's going to just give you the victory that you need this morning. This morning. Jesus. 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 All right, if you feel that this morning, come and pray with you. Come, come and pray this morning. Come on, come on. Jesus, may the altar.